I just have one last question, Mr. Miller. You really are not taking any acknowledgement that you knew anything, that you didn't do anything wrong. You've said that numerous times uh, on the record today that you did nothing wrong. So I find it hard to believe why did you resign or why are you resigning? I, uh, I never said I didn't do anything wrong, Ms. Nunez. What I said is contained in the questions. I resigned um, because as the acting commissioner, what happens in the IRS, whether I was personally involved or not, stops at my desk. The Ohio Liberty Coalition, this is their doc part of their documents in response to IRS requests. This is only part of it. And this, all these documents weren't enough for the IRS to approve their application. And in fact, uh, Tom Z, who's a former president of the organization, who is here today, said that they applied in June 2010. They finally received approval. This wasn't enough, by the way. In December of 2012, one month after the November election. There's another lady I met in the group, in the audience from Ohio, uh, Fremont, Ohio, who indicated that her group had a book club. And the IRS demanded a list of all the books that they had read and a book report from the group explaining what was in the books that they read. You can't make this stuff up. This is unbelievable. Let me ask you, sir, if you have, using your statutory powers and fulfilling your responsibility, determined that the IRS picks who wins and who loses in America. I don't believe that is the case. No, sir. You have not and the statements that were made in, a, in very inflammatory charges at the beginning of this hearing, it is obvious, have no basis in fact, at least any fact that has yet been demonstrated this morning. It is important that in addressing and fully correcting one wrong, we not complete and be involved in other wrongs, such as encouraging the proliferation of secret corporate money, not just the proliferation and pollution of our democracy by that money, but that it be tax-subsidized secret corporate money, that we not uh, permit those who have a fundamental disagreement with the progressive tax system using this incident as a basis for shifting even more of the burden of financing our defense uh, and our essential government services onto working people, that we not permit those who have an agenda that has now been voted 37 times to try to undermine the full and effective implementation of the Affordable Health Care Act so that the health care crisis is ended for families across this country. That's what's at stake here. Uh, that's what's been discussed here. Uh, it is not based on any fact associated with this investigation to this date as indicated by the Republican-appointed Inspector General whose job it was to determine whether any of these charges had merit. We're, we're being, <clears throat> you engaged with Mr. Reichert on the question as to whether you knew that this committee, th this whole idea of does the committee have the right to know this information, and then you sort of sheltered yourself in this idea of, well, I've always told the truth. Let's set that aside for a moment. Now, you're a lawyer and I'm a lawyer. You know that in the process of discovery, Mr. Miller, that when you find subsequent information, counsel has a duty to disclose that to the opposite party. There is no Perry Mason moments. There is no gotcha moments. There is no litigious situation where somebody comes in and says, oh, we are just showing up, Your Honor, with this information, and we haven't disclosed it to the other side. Don't you acknowledge that you had a duty, based on your testimony before this committee, of what your actual knowledge was? Didn't you have a duty, Mr. Miller, to come forward and disclose that? to the committee based on all this cascading inquiries that had happened from the Ways and Means Committee directed to you? So I don't believe so, sir. I, what was happening was uh, I was in possession of some facts, was not possession of all facts. We had done an internal review to see what we needed to do to get these cases moving because, again, the processing was bad, the listing was bad. Those are two different pieces we were dealing with. TIGDA was in at exactly the same time. They were getting all the facts. 
We were going to wait for them to get the facts so that I didn't come in and, uh, and either mess up their investigation or otherwise uh, give you facts that were not correct, sir. So you weren't concerned about the timing of the TICTA investigation when you and Ms. Lerner made the decision to move forward and do the planted question. Is that it, right? It was done. It was done. We and had so all the had facts. The and we had made our written response. Right, I understand that. So in other words, you had the actual information, the totality of the information that you're describing today, you had it all in your possession at the time at which you were under a scheme with Ms. Lerner to go and do a planted question. Is that right? I sort of objected to the term scheme. We had the information. We were reaching out to the committee. An understanding, the uh, a, a written or not written down uh, contemplated we were reaching out to the play, a manipulation, the call it what you will. You had all of the information, isn't that right? We were reaching out to the committee at the same time. Uh, well, what form did that outreach take? We called to try to get on the calendar. You called to try and get on the calendar. Is that all you got? You're arguing today. Well, this is a, this is a list of questions that, uh, in my case, my local Northeast Tarrant County Tea Party was sent. And it's, it's a list that most taxpayers would not answer and most taxpayers should not have to answer. But it, it asks some questions that should have never been asked. Uh, a printed copy of every page of your website, every tweet from your Twitter account, every personal resumes from all your board members, copies of every flyer you ever made and every flyer any guest speaker ever handed out. Explain your relationship with True the Vote, a copy of every single email ever sent by our group. Uh, this is a list that is overly burdensome, and uh, in my case, uh, it has led to a deep discouragement on, on these parties, uh, and it has limited their ability to educate the public. Well, this is a, this is a list of questions that, uh, in my case, my local Northeast Tarrant County Tea Party was sent. And it's, it's a list that most taxpayers would not answer, and most taxpayers should not have to answer. But it, it asks some questions that should have never been asked. Uh, a printed copy of every page of your website, every tweet from your Twitter account, every personal resumes from all your board members, Copies of every flyer you ever made and every flyer any guest speaker ever handed out. Explain your relationship with True the Vote. A copy of every single email ever sent by our group. Uh, this is a list that is overly burdensome. And uh, in my case, uh, it has led to a deep discouragement on, on these parties. Uh, and, and is. Was there anything in any of these, this criteria that was outside of what I'm seeing in this report that would have indicated to me that other than conservative groups who were applying for this status, that you had a word in there anywhere to say, okay, the litmus test is this seems to be political. So we always look at political. Where is the word progressive? Where is the? I'm not. I'm not arguing words? that the list was bad and that the list was conservative based. What then I'm saying I would is say, more than that. Excuse me. I'm going to reclaim my time on this because then I would say it's targeted. You can't have that both ways. That's targeting. And there are 16 times in this report that says that there was targeting. So I believe that as you're giving this testimony, that you can't have that both ways. Now. Um, there's also ineffective management that is talked about in this report. And even if you get outside of this and say, okay, there was no targeting, I want to know how a couple of employees that are considered low level could have done what was done here. Because this says to the American people that out of thousands of employees that you have at the IRS, there's ineffective management there. Nobody's watching this. If this was noted in 2010 and in 2013, we're just now finding out about this, that certainly is ineffective management. Because there should have been somebody that was overlooking this that said, this must stop. And I'm going to come back in 30 days to make sure it stopped. But it continued and it continued, and now we've got 400 applications, um, some of them over three years. This is more than ineptitude. As you sit here today, you were not fired from your job. And I can tell you, in my private experience, you would have been fired on the spot. And all you were allowed to do is resign and retire? 
And now you've come here and somehow tra try to say, I did the honorable thing by falling on my sword, when nothing bad is going to happen to you. You're going to get your full benefits. You're going to get everything that's associated with uh, your retirement as an IRS employee. Nothing and, bad is happening to me, Congressman. <laughs> yeah, financially, you're, you're allowed to retire. That's the level of accountability in Washington, D.C. now. You're, you're still acting. You, you came here on the taxpayer dollar today. You're getting a paycheck for being here today, correct? Correct? Correct. Yeah. I want to know who you identified that had the responsibility to manage this situation. I want names. I want to know where they worked, when they worked, and what they did. Do you want it for, well, right now? Lois Lerner is the primary individual who is located in Washington. Um, Joseph Grant was her supervisor. He, too, was located in Washington. And located in Cincinnati, there were a number of people, a director named Holly Patz, P-A-Z. Um, she was the acting director for a significant period of time that this was occurring. And then there were various management, techni technical unit managers and the like. Uh, where you're sitting, you should be outraged. Uh, but you're not. The American people should be outraged, and they are. And this committee, this has nothing to do with political parties. This has to do with highly targeted groups. This reconfirms everything that the American public believes. This is a huge blow to the faith and trust that the American people have in their government. Is there any limit to the scope of where you folks can go? Is there anything at all? Is there any way that we could ask you, is there any question that you shouldn't have asked? My goodness, how much money do you have in your wallet? Who do you get emails from? Whose sign do you put up in your front yard? This is a tax question. Now, you don't think that's intimidating? It's sure as hell intimidating. And I don't know that I got any answers from you today. And I don't know that uh, what Mr. George has done is great work. But you know what? There's a heck of a lot more that has to come out in this. And anybody to sit here today and listen to what you have to say, I am more concerned today than I was before, and the fact that you all can do just about anything you want to anybody, you know, you can put anybody out of business that you want anytime you want. And I got to tell you, you talked about you're a horribly run uh, organization. If you're on the other side of the fence, you're not given that excuse. And when the IRS comes in, you're not allowed to be shoddy. You're not allowed to be run horribly. You're not allowed to make mistakes. You're not allowed to do one damn thing that doesn't come in compliance. If you do, you're held responsible right then. I just think the American people have seen what's going on right now in their government. This is absolutely an overreach, and this is an outrage for all America. I yield back. All right. Now, with regard to Sarah Hall Ingram, you may have been confused as to when she worked there, but she was there from 2009 to 2012. You said you had horrendous customer service. And what happened to her? She got $100,000 in bonuses, and she was promoted. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Renacci. That uh, brings this hearing to an end. But I promise the American people this investigation has just begun. Hearing adjourned. <laughs>